Hello, I'm Tom Krauser and I reside in the 30th Delegate District in Kanawha County, West Virginia. Our district elects seven delegates, which is the second largest district within all the United States. Fact is, only 10 other states have multi-districts at all, meaning more than one delegate is elected from an area. Now, understand I'm a people. I'm not part of any radical group or political conspiracy, and this issue doesn't have to do with Democrats or Republicans. It's simply about how to best organize the House of Delegates to complete its function representing us guys, the, the people. So here are my reasons the 30th should be divided into seven single delegate districts. And keep in mind, while I'm talking about the 30th, the same logic applies to any district that elects multiple delegates in our state or any other state. So let's get started. This is Kanawha County, comprised of 911 square miles. I've outlined the map with some simplistic boundaries to make it easier for you to see, and you can see it's a little distorted, but it'll do. Now, this is the 30th delegate district within Conal County. Now, by my rough calculations, that's about 600 square miles or so. To drive from one end of the district, say, St. Albans, to like Montgomery on the other end, well, that would take you about 58 minutes according to MapQuest, or about the same amount of time that a drive from Charleston to Huntington would take. And By the way, if you did drive from Charleston to Huntington, you would pass through at least three delegate districts along the way. There is in downtown Charleston a single delegate district, the 31st. It was formed as a minority influence district so that minorities would have influence over who is selected to re represent them as a delegate. By the way, that's a strong argument for all of us having single delegate districts, isn't it? Well, nevertheless, we're going to ignore the district boundaries down there for this discussion, and that's basically on Charleston's flat next to the river. Now, this yellow dot illustrates the part of the 30th delegate district which is contained within the city limits of Charleston and South Charleston. Basically, Charleston, South Hills, South Charleston Hills, and, and what we call the Quarter G shopping area, and my guess is maybe 30 square miles total. Now, residing within the yellow dot, or the boundaries of Charleston and South Charleston, is about 40,000 people. Well, there's about 79,000 of us out here in pickup truck land, which is everywhere else uh, in the district. Now, that totals about 119,000 more or less for the 30th district. So, how would you best uh, organize the delegates out here to best represent uh, the 30th delegate district? Well, the way it's worked out is that all of our delegates, all seven of our delegates, are from the incorporated areas of Charleston and South Charleston. Not only that, but we have two senatorial districts in Kanawha County, uh, each elect two senators. So all four of our state senators also reside in that area. Think about that for a moment. Seven percent of the entire House of Delegates reside in this area, as do 12 percent of the total state Senate. Now, if the yellow dot area was a delegate district of its own, it would have about 5,714 people per delegate when everyone else in the state of West Virginia is somewhere around 17,000 per delegate. And Outside of that area, well, actually there are 79,000 people that have no delegates living out there experiencing what we do on a daily basis. So I got to thinking, how would a business organize this area to serve all of the people? That's when I decided to go Krogering. Kroger has a large uh, supermarket at Ashton Place that serves the Hill section, but they also put a store in St. Albans and one down around Smithers, and they have one in Dunbar and South Charleston and Kanawha City and Marmette. Hey, look at that. They have seven stores. We have seven delegates. That's interesting. Not only that, but Mr. Kroger understands that there are actually different markets within the 30th, so they put different things in their stores to serve those that shop there. So I decided to visit some of the Kroger stores. In fact, I visited all seven to see what some of the differences were. We started at the Ashton Place Kroger's. Now, Ashton Place has one of the largest and finest wine collections in West Virginia. 
N- not only that, but they have a special display of nothing but champagnes. You can see 12 different ones here, and the display to the back includes even more. It's a great selection. There's one priced at, what, $18.99? Perfect. For comparison, I show you the Kroger store in Smithers, who, well, they don't have quite as big of a wine selection, but they do have some champagnes, and here they are in the lower right. Uh, there's the 9.99 variety and there's the 5.59 variety. Now you may think, of course, well, South Hills is more affluent than Smithers, but it's more than that. There's just not that much of a demand for higher cost champagne here in Smithers, or I believe Mr. Kroger would be providing it. However, when it comes to beer, well, it seems to me that the Smithers stores appears to have a much larger beer selection. But that just goes back to knowing your market and the people in your market, doesn't it? At Ashton Place, Kroger's features the fine boar's headline of delicatessen meats and cheeses. The Smithers store, on the other hand, tends to focus more on Oscar Mayer. In the bakery area, the Ashton Place Kroger's has a standalone display of gluten-free breads, while a similar display in Smithers focused on, well, Little Debbie Nutty Bars. And there was one thing that only Ashton Place Kroger's had, a, a sushi bar that's celebrating its 10th anniversary. I asked Carl down at the Smithers store what they do for sushi down there. Well, he said they didn't have much call for it, and if they actually carried it, well, he didn't think it would sell that well. I agree, and it's not because one place is better than the other. It's just we have a diversity of tastes and experiences from one part of the 30th district to the other, which is why Kroger spaces out their seven stores to cover the area. Don't you think the same thing should apply to our delegates as well? I do. That's because, like Kroger customers, we're different from area to area, and we don't all have the same state government experiences either. Out in the county, we have more limited police protection and rely on the state police and county sheriff more. In the city, there's the Charleston and South Charleston Police Departments. We have different experiences with our roads. It's one thing to intellectually understand about bad roads, but it's entirely another to be driving on them on a daily basis. Our children go to different schools. Again, hearing about issues with schools is one thing. Having your children attend them is something else, and as it gives you a little bit more intimate experience and our experiences color and impact our priorities. We need people as delegates who have more of the same daily experiences as we do to represent us. Having the same geographic area served by seven individual delegates districts instead of one just better assures that we have a more diverse and better informed House of Delegates just as the 31st Minority Influence District has shown us. There are two major reasons we should have single delegate districts in West Virginia now. The first is so the delegate representing us has a better chance of experiencing state government services the same way we do. That improves legislative priorities for everybody. And second, with individual district, delegates are not all clumped together, so there's a better chance that you and I will run into them at church or at the supermarket or a school function. That results in more and easier communications with the people that are being served. And all that results in our House of Delegates being more able to represent all of us in West Virginia, regardless of where we live. Our government representatives are simply closer to the people they serve. If you agree that single delegate districts are the way to go, then I encourage you to go to www.singledelegate.com and sign our petition. Your home address assures that your petition will go to your delegates that represent you now. Remember, if we don't let them know that we want single delegate districts this summer, then it will be 10 years before we have another opportunity to make our voices heard on the subject. I'm Tom Krauser, and thank you for listening.